Hello quilters, it's Marianne Fontana, Fontana Originals, and I'm working on another Cults of Valor quilt. Uh, this one I am calling Stars and Stripes Forever, and it's a very simple pattern. It consists of an eight-pointed star, triangle blocks, but these are actually just sewn. They're like setting triangles. It consists of star, it's an eight-point star, and it's very simple. It's just half squares, triangles, and squares, and then setting triangles in a variety of colors, either blue and white, red and white, red and blue, uh, to form the stripes. Now, if you don't want to do the gold stars, you can do silver stars, and that's what I'm doing today. This is actually white fabric with silver sparkles. And I'm going to do my test blocks in these three colors. I'm doing a really dark blue. I'm doing almost a burgundy. And then I don't know if you can see this in the light, but this is a really sparkly fabric. And when we get under the design table lights, you'll be able to see it. So let's go down and I will show you uh, the pieces that make up this quilt. I'm going to make, as I said, the uh, one with the white. And uh, here is my sparkle fabric. But the first thing I need to do is I'm going to make my star. So that's an eight-pointed star, and these finish at eight inches. So each of these is two inches. It's a two-inch finished square. It's a two-by-four-inch finished flying geese, and it's a four-inch finished center square for those of you that are rotary cutting. For those of you using AccuQuilt, I have used Shaped 1, which is a 4-inch finished square to cut the center piece. I have used Shaped 2, which is a 2-inch finished square for the corners in blue. I have used Shaped 4, which is the quarter square triangle in blue. And I have used Shaped 5, which is the small half square triangle in the white sparkle to make the flying geese. And I've cut my pieces out. Um, and all I have to do is sew it. But first I want to show you the second piece, which is just simply eight inch triangles. And you need to cut all the other blocks out of this shape. And they're all eight inch finished, whether you do a red and white, whether you do a red and a blue square, or if you do a blue and white square. And that's the only other pieces in the blocks you're going to have to make. Other than that, uh, you will be ready to sew uh, the quilt as soon as you're done with these just two uh, simple blocks. I've laid out all the pieces just to make sure I have everything I need and I know the direction to sew them in. And if I was making all of the blocks for the quilt, I'd be making 14 of them. I'd actually stack 14 sets up because I'd want to make sure I had 14, 14, 14, and I had the correct count before I get started. In order to sew this together simply, the first thing I need to do is make the flying geese. So I'm going to pick up all the pieces for the flying geese, and we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew all the white to one side and then down the other. I have my two shapes all set up, and the first thing I'm going to do is sew the block to one side. I always find it's easier if I turn them over in the direction they're supposed to be sewn, I'm less likely to make a mistake. So I will take the first one, and obviously it's right sides together. So the right sides are facing down on that one, and they're facing up. I like to match from the corner. Now I've cut these obviously with an Aki quilt, so the dog ears are cut off. But if you're using a traditional method and you have the pointy pieces, just match them up at the bottom, and then pick up your presser foot and lay it onto your fabric. Do not try to sew into the point your machine will eat your fabric. And then I'm using a quarter inch foot to make sure I get perfect seams. And you will simply continue to chain piece them down one side of the blocks. There are four quarter square triangles and eight of these half square triangles per block. So I'm only making two for a test. So I'm gonna sew together eight of them. But if you were making the whole quilt, you would just continue piecing. So let me finish this and I'll show you how to do the other side. I've sewn all the pieces together to the one side and now I'm going to finger press it. Normally I will finger press to the dark side, but whenever I'm doing flying geese, I always press to the outside because it helps me get those perfect points. So I'm going to just finger press the piece, turn it around, and then start up the other side and I'm going to rotate these. Let's see, I have to sew this way. So I want them to be like 
this. This is how I'm going to sew them in place. And in this case, I'm going to start to this side and make sure it fits. And if it's a little short or long, just center it between the two. You've got a quarter of inch seam to make up any funkiness. And then I will just take the next piece and I'm just finger pressing as I go and then turning it around, picking up the piece, checking the both points from both sides. I actually like to do it this side because it's not folded over here. And then if I have to, I can give this just a slight little tug. I will leave, or I will try to leave, a little bit of fabric under my needle so that foot is raised slightly. So when I go to do the next piece, I could just slide it right in. Like that. All right, let me finish these and we'll put them into the uh, block. I put the flying geese back onto the block and make sure the wide white part is to the end and the blue is to the out because that is the border of the block. Normally, a lot of people will teach you to sew this to this to this, this to this to this, and then this to this to this, and then you sew the three rows together. I've notoriously sewn them upside down, backwards, made mistakes, so I actually sew the entire block together in one sewing. And what I will do is sew this to this, this to this, and this to this along this seam in a row, chain stitch them, just sew them together. And then when I'm done, these will be connected right down here. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach these. And what happens is the block stays together. I don't turn them around backwards. And then when I go to flip them and sew them the other way, they were all in the perfect place and they're connected and I don't make a mistake. So let me show you. It's really quick and easy. And actually the block goes together super fast. The most important thing to remember when sewing this together is keep your eye on the block and make sure you're sewing the right pieces together. So I'm going to start with these two pieces and I'm going to sew the first piece in row one and the flying geese together like this and then I'm just going to turn it. I don't usually normally like to start on at the corner because it eats it but I'm going to start at the seam if you see, and then I can back up just a little and I won't have any eaten thread. All right, so I'm gonna sew it almost to the end. I always like to leave my needle down and then I'm gonna look and I need another flying geese and that big square in the center, which is shape one, which is four and a half inch in cut. And these are the two pieces I have here. So I'm going to flip it over and sew it together and slide it right in next to the other one. And I'm gonna make sure the ends meet over here. Make sure this is good. And if you have to go underneath and give it a little tug. Leave my foot, my needle down. Go get the last pieces. Can you see it's this square and the other flying geese? Right, here I am, flip them over. Stick it right in under there. Make sure my ends are matched up. Hold my seam down. Okay, cut my thread. Now, as you get better, you can do a couple blocks at a time, but I like to do them one at a time. This way, you never forget where you are. So I'm going to open it up. And for now, I'm not really, I'm actually going to press it, push it out towards that because it's a solid piece and that point will look better and it'll lay flatter. And I'm going to move over and look and say, what's the next one? I need a solid blue. So I'm going to go ahead and take that in again. I'm going to start at the bottom because that's not a sewn piece and make sure it matches. Put it a little forward on it so that it doesn't eat it. And I can always back up and stop. Then I'm opening up the next one. Now this is the big center square. And now I need another flying geese right here. Make sure the white is center in the center. Put the points together, slide it under. Let it catch. Put the other side. You notice I'm using no pins. I don't like to use pins. I find them unnecessary and it slows me down. Needle down. Open up the last section. Last piece is a small square. Sew it together. Making sure it's all even. 
Now this is the great part. I'm gonna back up just a little. And when I open them, my star is all set, ready to go. Let me get this other one open. I'll just put it under the foot pedal so you can see it. And there's my star. Now all I have to do is flip this up, turn it, and I'm ready to sew the other side. It's that easy. Start slow. Now, this is important. You want the seams to go in opposite directions. This is going towards the big square. This is going towards the little square. And I'm going to get my finger in there and make sure those two seams kiss. Can you see that? Let's just see if we can get you over there. And look, see? One's going up. One's going down. Push it here. And you can feel them kiss. It's really cool. I sew just to that seam needle down. Now I'm gonna go to the next side over here. Let's back up a little more. So you can see I'm here now. This is going up, this is going down. Pull it until you feel them lock in and hold your finger. And then make sure this is lined up here and you're just going right for that corner. Straight through, perfect seam, stop at the seam, readjust, so Cut your thread. Now all I have to do is open this side, flip this side over, and sew the second side. Needle down, let's see, put down. Oh, that looks like it's getting stuck, so I just pick it up, push it forward, and off I go. Now, let's make sure our seams are working for us. Up and down, pull it. And if you have to, you can do a little, you know, shimmying with the fabric, of course. All right, all right. I stop right at the seam, go to the next one. See, because if it's a little off, you've got a little stretch across here that you can just snug it in. Again, make sure this doesn't migrate. Stop at the seam, realign. And it's done. How easy is that? Here's our star. Let's go back down to the design uh, and we'll uh, look at the other pieces. Uh, actually, I wanna sew those half square triangles together and show you how they go. Once your eight-pointed star is made, all you have to do then is make these half-square triangle blocks. And these are eight-inch finished blocks. So when you're cutting your triangles, you will cut a block eight and seven-eighths wide and cut it in half to get your triangles. If you're using the AccuQuilt, there is an eight-inch setting triangle die that you can use for these. And you're basically going to cut 10 white and blue, 10 white and red, and 10 red and blue. And sew them together very simply, right down the middle. And you can either press your seams open or to the dark side. I'm going to leave that option open until I sew the quilt together to see which way they need to go. Anyway, I'm going to sew these together, press everything, and show you the blocks, uh, how they look before they go into a quilt. The quilt is built in straight rows. Uh, I did forget to mention there are actually two 8-inch finished solid blue blocks you will need to cut out for the pattern. But all you have to do then is follow the design. And obviously, I don't have all of the, uh, the blocks made. I've just made some, but this is the blue one and the star below it and here. And I'm just gonna build across to kind of show you how it lays out. All right, so we will actually have, I'm going to put the uh, this star here and the stars are at an angle, but it is sewn straight. So now what I need is a blue and white piece. I put the blue in and that will start my stripes. And then I can go up here to get my stripe. And I'm gonna put the white with the red and you just really have to alternate them to get the striping. And that's it, just flipping and turning 
those sewn blocks in order to get the diagonal stripes. It's as simple as that. No funny sewing, simple, easy. So I hoped you liked the Stars and Stripes Forever. Uh, the pattern is available for sale on my Etsy site. It's $8, 20% of the sale. Uh, of every pattern uh, goes towards the Quilts of Valor Foundation, which I donate annually. So I hope you will buy the pattern and make a quilt for a veteran. Anybody can make a quilt. Uh, the requirements are it must be a minimum of 55 inches wide and 65 inches long, and obviously be uh, made, use your quarter inch seam allowances, and you can too, can make a quilt for a veteran. Uh, contact your local Quilts of Valor chapter or the Quilts of Valor Foundation online to learn more about getting involved in this worthwhile cause. And if you see a veteran, be sure to thank them. Happy quilting.